Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create blurred backgrounds in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve, so without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Next, we're going to give this page a name, so I'm just going to call this Blurred Backgrounds. Click on Use Divi Builder, and then I'm going to build this from scratch. However, you can also use these techniques to do these designs on an existing page. And also, if you want to download this file, you can go ahead to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, so you can just download it and add it onto your library. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add three columns. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Next, we're going to go into our row settings and uh, make some adjustments. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my row settings, click on design. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to adjust my gutter width. So I'm going to come over here to sizing and activate use custom gutter width. Now here, I'm going to set it to two. Now this setting here just uh, decreases this, uh, the space between the columns. So if you take it all the way to one, that means there won't be any spaces between the columns. All right, so now that I have that in place, the next stage is to set my, to set my width to 100%. So I'm going to come over here to my maximum width. By default, it's set to 10, uh, 1080 pixels. So I want this to be 100%. Uh, percent. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now, there's a bit of CSS code that we need to add to our columns. So I'm going to come back over here to content. And then I'm going to go to my second column. So I'm going to click here on this little gear icon. And then I'm going to go to the advanced tab. So here I'm going to go to custom CSS. And in our main element, I'm going to paste this code. It's just called overflow hidden. Okay, so I'm going to do the same to column three as well. So I'm going to click on this little uh, arrow here. Click on my column three, advanced, custom CSS. And I'm going to paste the same CSS code. Now, if you want to use the exact same um, settings that I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so pretty much we're done here. Let's, let me go ahead and save and then save one more time. Now, let's start entering our text module. So I'm going to come over here and search for my text module and select it. So the text we need in here is going to be a heading and it's going to be called Beautiful Destinations. So we need to set this to heading two. So I'm going to highlight it all, click on this drop down, and set it to heading two. Now we need to customize this heading. So I'm going to come over here to design, heading text, make sure you're on the heading two tab. And we're going to change our fonts from default to Poppins. Now Poppins is a free font you can use. It's a Google font. So go ahead and select it. Right. So now that we have this, the next stage is to change our color. So I'm going to come over here on heading to text color and I'm going to paste my color in here. And we also need to change our size because right now we are at 26 pixels. So this needs to be about 40 pixels, nice and big. Now we need to add a bit of spacing to our heading. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and add a margin of 9VW. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm also going to add another module. So this time the module I'm going to add here is a divider. So I'm going to search for it and select it. Now here where it says show divider, make sure it's set to yes. And then we're going to click here on design and make further adjustments. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that my line color is set to black. So I'm going to click here on the eyedropper tool. And then I'm just going to drag this all the way down here to black. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come back over here as well and add another text module. So I'm going to search for it and select it. So in here, you can leave the, you can leave this text in here. Here's your dummy text, but I'm just going to use lorem text. I prefer using this, but of course you want to be using the text that applies to whatever website you're designing. Now let's go and make some further adjustments. So I'm going to come over here to design text and I'm going to change my font here to Poppins just to match our heading. And for my weight, I'm going to set this to light. And for my text size, by default, it's set to 14. So we need this at 17. And my line height here is going to be 2.1. Now, the line height here is good to change, to, be, uh, to change because you want to make sure that it's easier to read. So 2.1 is a decent size. So pretty much I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead now and save. And finally, we're going to add a button here. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and add my button module. I'm going to select it. And the text on my button here just needs to say view all destinations. Now it's time to customize it. And to do that, we want to come over here to the design tab, click on button and activate use custom styles for button. 
Now we can go ahead and make all our settings. So first of all, our button text size is set to 20, that's fine. So I'm gonna click here on the eyedropper tool and just drag this all the way down here to black. So that's gonna be my text color. So moving on, I'm gonna add my button background color. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and I'm gonna paste it in here. Now, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's continue here. So our button border width uh, needs to be set to zero. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. By default, it's set on two, uh, two pixels. Drag this all the way to zero. And also for the border radius, I'm gonna set this to zero. Now for the font weight, I'm gonna set this to bold, all caps. Now let's head over to spacing. So I'm gonna click here. Now what we could do here is we could add a top margin of 20 and a bottom margin of 20. That, that just gives us some breathing space. So I'm gonna come over here, add the same value both to the top and the bottom by activating this button. And then I'm gonna go into my padding. So I'm gonna start here again with my top and bottom padding, set this to 20. And then for my left and right, I'm gonna set this to 50. So now you can see our button now is nice and big. Now you may want to go in and adjust the sizes of um, our headings and our titles here for the button if it's way too big. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save here. And then it's time now to add some content to our middle column. So I'm gonna start over here by adding an image module. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. I'm gonna click here and choose my image. Now the image you need to use here needs to be an image which has a one-to-one -one ratio. Basically it needs to have this, the, the width and the height of the same size. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my image. And as you can see here, it's 1000 by 1000 pixels. I'm gonna click upload an image. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design sizing and make sure you set it to forceful width. I'm gonna save this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another image to column two. So I'm gonna search for my image module, I'm gonna select it. And then I'm gonna choose my image, upload an image. And as we did before, I'm gonna force full width. So I'm gonna click here and change this from no to yes. And for the height, I'm gonna set this to 320. Next, I'm gonna come over here to spacing. And for my margin top, I'm gonna to set this to minus 100 pixels. Now it's time to go to the filters. Now here, we're gonna start with our saturation and we're gonna set this to 200%. The brightness to 145, the contrast to 117, and the blur to 40 pixels. Right, so now that we have our blur in place, I'm gonna come over here to transform and I'm gonna add 180. So pretty much that's all I need to do. I'm gonna save this. And now I'm gonna drag this module here below this image, like that. So now you can see the negative margin that I added is adding this overlap. So the next stage now is to add the rest of our content. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and I'm gonna add a call to action module here. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. So first of all, I'm gonna come over here to my link and add my button URL, because as you can see, my call to action here does not have a button. So I'm just gonna add a blank link and you can see by just by adding that, my button is now showing. All right, so now that we have all this in place, um, in fact, before I move on to the next item, I'm just gonna come back over here to my text and for my button, I'm just gonna call this learn more. And uh, this color here is pretty much messing up our design. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that color completely. So I'm gonna come over here to background and where it says use background color, I'm just gonna say no, or you can also add transparency. So both uh, actually work. So I'm gonna say uh, no to this. Now it's time to go to the text settings. So I'm gonna click here on design. So the first thing we're gonna work, uh, is to work on here is the heading. So it's gonna be heading two. So our title font here needs to be set to poppins and the size to 40 pixels. And the letter spacing needs to be set to minus one. Right, so um, in fact, you know what? This text here needs to be set to architecture just to go with uh, pretty much what we have here on our image. So I'm gonna go back over here to my text and, this, and then just type architecture. Okay, so moving on, let's work on the body text. So I'm gonna come over here, change this to poppins as well. And I'm also going to change my body weight here to light and the line height to 2.2. Now it's time to work on the button settings. So I'm gonna scroll down here, click on button and activate styles for button. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is to just make sure that my body, uh, my button text size is set to 20 and my button text color is set to white. Now for the gradient, we're gonna do something different here. So I'm gonna click here on 
at the gradient tab, click on this plus button and start by adding my first color. Now for this, I'm gonna, uh, my color is going to have some transparency. So what we need to do is to drag the second slider down a little bit until we see these brackets and then paste the values between the brackets. Now, as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so it's time now to add my second color. So again, I'm gonna click here and add my color between the brackets, that. Right, so moving on, uh, my border width and my border radius needs to be set to zero. Set it here with my border width and my font here needs to be poppins. So I'm gonna click here on default, set this to poppins, set it to all uppercase and the font weight needs to be bold. Next, I'm gonna set my margins and my padding. So I'm gonna scroll, scroll all the way down here, click on spacing. And then the first thing I'm gonna do here is to set my top margin to 50, top and bottom padding to 20, activate my chain so I can add my value both to the top and the bottom, and then left and right padding as well. I'm gonna set this to 50. All right, so the last step now is to add an overlap onto our blurred image. So I'm gonna come all the way down here and click on spacing. And here we want to add a negative margin of minus 250. And now you can see our text now is easier to read on this blurred background. Next, we're gonna add a padding of 2VW, both to the left and the right. And you can see now we have some breathing space here on the sides. And pretty much this is our first design. Okay, so as we can see here on, um, on the third column, we still need to have some content over there. So the easiest thing to do, since we've spent a lot of time designing this first uh, column, we need to duplicate all these columns over here to the third column. So what I found was easy for me is to just come over here to my wireframe mode and then just duplicate them that way over here. So what I could do here is to just duplicate this one by one, take it over to the side, that, and then over here you wanna uh, switch back to your desktop view. And now we have all the duplicated modules. So the final thing now is to just to change your images and also the content that goes into the third column. And this is our final design. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.